Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Lori Casey. Did you know that the concept for the organ appears to have been created as early as 246 BC? Well, today, organs are as much a part of the religious setting as pews and stained glass windows. In Champaign, Illinois, we had the opportunity to spend some time with one of the premier builders of pipe organs in the country. John Buzard first heard the sounds of the majestic pipe organ at age five when his father was a priest at a Chicago Episcopal Church. He made his first repair to that church's organ at age six. It was then that he knew he wanted to become an organ builder. Ever since uh, that time, everything I've done has been hopefully, if not a sidestep, at least a step toward being the best organ builder I know how to be. John started building organs, first in his parents' basement in Chicago, then in college at the University of Illinois. In 1980, he started an organ-making business from his home in Urbana. And as we, as people heard our my first instruments and they really liked them, they contracted for more. And it was the point uh, when the Chapel of St. John the Divine in Champaign wanted an organ. Um, we realized since it was going to be in a case that stood about 35 feet tall that there was no way we could build that in the basement of a house. And so I found this building in which we're located now. In 1989, John moved the business into a commercial building, which had been home to the Women's Town Club of Champaign. The 1897 building was carefully restored and renovated to meet the demands of organ building. One of the modifications to the building involved opening up two stories so that these mammoth instruments could be put together in the shop. Each pipe organ's design is created here in my, in my studio. Uh, the mechanical systems for each instrument are designed here by um, Chuck Eames, who is my right-hand man and uh, general manager and vice president of the company. Um, all of the woodworking for the organ is done here, from consoles through wind chests, casework, it's all done here. Um, the organ pipes, which we have made for us in Holland and Germany, are all voiced here in this shop uh, by Brian Davis and Evan Wrench, the, my tonal guys. Um, basically, everything that goes into building a pipe organ, except for making the pipes and the keyboards, happens here. All around the building are photographs of the beautiful work created by John and his skilled team of craftsmen. Over half of the organs built here reside in churches around Illinois and the rest are scattered around the country. John designates each organ by opus number. Opus is the Latin word for work. As of 2005, they were working on opus 32 with more in the works. Well, Opus 1, I made about a nickel an hour on that organ. <laughs> and with, with Opus 32, I'm bringing home a nice uh, annual salary, <laughs> if I may be so mercenary as to say that. No, uh, the difference between the two organs themselves, Opus 1, I had to use almost everything out of their existing organ. Um, a little bit, enough that we knew that we could change the character of it and have it be more of a modern instrument. Um, I shouldn't disparage dear little Opus One, because it has never had an emergency warranty call of any kind. It just sits there and plays perfectly every week. Uh, it doesn't go out of tune. You can't, can't really ask for an awful lot more than that. Um, but I guess Opus 32 or 37, they're bigger. Um, I'm allowed now, because I've been in business long enough, that I'm allowed to develop a tonal style. Whereas Opus One was basically make the best use out of this collection of pipes that we've got here. Now I get to say, okay, we really want the principal chorus to sound this way. We want the we want the reed battery to sound this way, and and so we have the ability to more more exactly craft the sound and the look of the organ. Every organ is different and designed for the church's architecture, acoustics, denomination, and liturgical needs. The challenge is that we want to have a sound that is consistent from one organ to the next. We don't want to be known as a kind of an organ builder that doesn't have an artistic style. So we strive, and very carefully, uh, to have th the sound of the organ on a consistent kind of basis from church to church. And the difficulty in that is 
that no two churches may be alike, they're also not acoustically alike. Uh, so you might have one church with a lovely rolling reverberation and another church that's so filled with pew pads and carpeting that, that it sounds like a radio studio. So it's up to Brian Davis, my, my uh, tonal director, to uh, craft the individual pipes to exactly what that acoustic is going to be so we can have a consistency of sound. The sound in an organ is made by wind blowing through a pipe and the pipe can take on one of two different kinds of generic classifications. It can be like a whistle or like a flute where the column of air actually vibrates or it can be sent through a pipe that we call a reed where actually a, a tongue of brass vibrates by the wind going past it. And then the different kinds of tone colors in the organ are arrived at by manipulating the geometry, the shape, the construction, and the material of these two generic classes of organ pipes. The concept of wind blowing through a pipe has not changed since the organ's inception, only the technology that opens and closes the valve. It's what John calls old tech or ancient tech. Even to this day, he chooses to use pen, paper, and ruler to draw his designs. A number of my colleagues have said, John, you're such a dinosaur. You need to get computer-assisted drafting and you need it now. And I say, well, Yes, but I know myself well enough to know that I'm lazy. Yeah, I work hard, but I'm lazy. And I know that once I get a library of these wonderful architectural shapes in my computer, I'd start using them. And I'd use them over and over and over, and pretty soon all my organ cases would stop. And I just want to resist that as long as I possibly can. While the name Buzard may be attached to every organ that leaves this shop, there's more than one person behind that name. John always credits his employees, master craftsmen who share the same vision for creating the highest quality work. A Buzard organ can take three to three and a half years to complete, from design to final installation. Cost is determined by the amount of labor and materials and can run upwards of a million dollars for some of their largest organs. But when asked about his favorite, it's not the grandest or the most expensive. John is particular to the one he built for his own church in Champaign. My wife plays the organ and conducts the choir. My son's decided he wants to be a church musician based on hearing that organ and hearing mommy and daddy play. Um, my daughter is interested, I hope, in wanting to build organs. That would be phenomenal. Um, so that holds, I think, a dear, special spot in my heart. Um, but as the danger of any perfectionist um, is that you always want to do better. The next time you always want to find something you can improve on. And so that's basically what's happened, that now Opus 32 uh, will have just that one more little improvement that Opus 31 didn't. It would be very, very subtle, and probably nobody in the world would notice, but everyone just a little something better.